All right. Hello, everyone. I just wanted to come to you live from my basement over here in not so sunny Connecticut to let you know I'm seeing a little bit of weakness here in the uh, tech sector. So obviously it's going to take a couple of days to play out now. So, so we'll have to see, but I'm going to show you what I'm what I'm watching now. It's important to remember, I see all these debates about, oh, you really can't compare Apple to NVIDIA because they have a different business model, or you can't compare Microsoft. I don't know what the business models are, okay? I'm not a tech person. I'm a, I'm a stock person. I've been a, it's an institutional trader for more than 20 years, and then I kind of retired and decided to teach because there's so much misinformation out there. Um, but anyway... Uh, let me just go through this real quick here, and I'll just tell tell you what I'm looking at. See, here is the technology sector, all right? And this is the makeup of the ETF, which tracks the sector. Microsoft is 22.7%. Apple is 19.3%. So just do the math. Those two together are more than 40%. NVIDIA is only, and I say only because it's still big, but 6.8%. The way these ETFs trade, they kind of keep these things in correlation. Every ETF has what we what we call a net asset value, all right, which is in here somewhere. You know how many shares, you see that's a net asset value there as of the close. You know how many shares of each stock are in the ETF, it says right here, and you know the price of each stock. So it's possible to determine exactly what the ETF should be worth. That's the net asset value. In the market, say the ETF really gets pounded hard, it goes down and it trades below the net asset value. What happens is the market makers will, will buy the ETF and then they will short all the stocks. That's the arbitrage that allows ETFs to exist. I know this because I used to be a market maker for two years. So if the, net, if the ETF gets below the net asset value, the market maker is gonna buy it and what they're gonna do is they're gonna short all of the stocks in the ETF, okay? So that in short means selling. So that's going to put pressure on them. So the opposite is true. If the ETF gets really aggressively bought and gets above the asset out value, then the market makers will short the, the ETF and go and buy the shares to cover their short. In, in ETF market making land, you can use shares to cover shorts of the ETF and vice versa. You can't do that in any other part of the trading world. All right. So now before we look at NVIDIA, I want to look at something that's going on here. This is the treasury market. This is just this ETF I look at for a uh, for a benchmark. It got up to this, notice the level here that was support became resistance. Supports can turn into resistance. That's because you have people that buy here. And when the price eventually drops lower, they're like, damn, I shouldn't have bought. If this gets backed up to my level and I can get out of break, break even, I'm going to. So you get these remorseful buyers placing sell orders at the level that was previously support. If there are enough, the level converts into resistance. The next thing that could happen is some of the sellers who create the resistance notice there are other sellers around lurking in the market, and they start to get concerned they're going to miss out because the buyers are going to go to whoever is willing to sell at the lowest price. So they start to sell, and it starts a snowball effect. Now, if these bonds sell off, that's going to push interest rates higher, and that's going to be bearish for most stocks. All right, so just pay attention here to Apple. Tested this support level. See, now you notice how this 181 level was resistance and then it converted into support? Well, resistance can convert into support. People sold here and when the price goes higher, like I shouldn't have sold. So I'm going to buy my shares back if they get back to my price. So so just like, uh, so buyers... More, just like buyer's remorse can turn support into resistance, seller's remorse can turn resistance into support. So this is about the fifth time this year that Apple has tested this, and it seems to be giving away. One of the things here that makes me think we might give away is notice these lower highs here. This is what we call the old uh, descending triangle pattern. And just think about it. The buyers are hanging out down around 181. The sellers are getting more anxious. As time passes, they're getting more aggressive, willing to sell at lower prices. So that makes these peaks, markets go in peaks and valleys. When the peak forms at a lower price than the prior peak, we call that a lower high. Shows us that sellers are getting more aggressive. So the descending triangle is an illustration of, 
aggressive sellers, complacent buyers. That sets the stage for a move lower. Microsoft, the biggest stock, which is still three times bigger than NVIDIA, has some pretty weak action here too. This really choppy action tends to be bearish. Notice how this thing kind of is just trended along in a nice, well-defined trend, right? It's up, sideways, down. All of a sudden, wham, goes haywire. This is what the old days they used to call that broadening formation. This tends to be bearish. And now let's just take a quick look at NVIDIA before I go. And maybe a little bit premature here, but something to pay attention to. The top of the rectangle, the red rectangle is the opening price. Notice how today's opening price was lower than yesterday's opening price. That opening price was lower than the prior day's opening price. So when you have the open occur at lower prices as time moves forward here, it shows the sellers are getting more aggressive. Short-term support, I'd be looking right down around here. I know most of my students are short-term traders, although we got all kinds over here. So this is right where basically where it is now, right around 78. Uh, I'm going to pick the high, the closing price from this day as my number. 78, I'm sorry, 75.38. So I'm going to just say 75 and a half. So yeah, 7.75 and a half. We start to break down there, then I probably think that we're going to move lower, and that's where I'll think about jumping in on the short side. Okay, everybody. Thanks. Hope to see you soon.